I'm so glad we decided to get Sally that new effects pedal. Everyone at the club says she's going to be the next Fred Wesley. She's really taken to it, hasn't she? Yesterday, she asked me if she could download all of the RH Factor albums so that she can listen to them even when she doesn't have Wi-Fi. What is that tasty groove? Oh, don't worry, dear. That's just the funky grease of the envelope filter that Sally learned how to use today. What's up, everybody? We're back for part two of our trombone effects pedal discussion um, and talking about what I like to use, why I use it, some of the kind of like thought process about settings and things like that. So today we're going to dig into a little bit about why I use a multi effects processor versus a bunch of individual stomp boxes or maybe something like Ableton or using your laptop. And then we're also going to dig into a few more sounds that I like. So let's check it out. All right, before we dive in here, hit that subscribe button so you get these videos directly to you. Um, get kind of first dibs on checking out each new video on that's posted on Monday on my YouTube channel. Today, we want to deal with why we're dealing with this multi FX pedal or why I'm dealing with this multi FX pedal. Um, there are a number of reasons why I prefer to use this route over other ones. I've experimented with a number of ways of doing this over the years, but this for me has been the best route um, to get the sounds that I'm looking for. All right, the first reason that I go with this option versus a bunch of stomp boxes, and this is the biggest one for sure, is the cost. Um, for me as a horn player, I don't necessarily play with my effects rig on every gig. You know, I really mostly use this on kind of bands that are like my own stuff, sometimes some other funk bands. I've even occasionally used it in like a wedding band or an event band, especially if there are only two horns. Um, it can be a great way to kind of like beef up the sound in some sections, or if I'm playing a lot of solos in that type of band, it's great to have those other sounds. But for the most part, you know, I'm not playing this in pit orchestras, I'm not playing this on big bands, I'm not playing this on like straight ahead jazz gigs um, for the most part. So I generally am only playing it maybe once or twice a month on gigs because I don't necessarily play as a leader a ton. Now, if I was playing in a group where I performed with effects on a very regular basis, or if I was booking my own band heavily, um, I might consider spending the money to invest in like multiple stomp boxes and all that kind of stuff. The thing to consider is that to get in the door for the kind of like, I don't know, basic pedal setup of the different pedals you might need, that's gonna be an octavizer or a harmonizer of some sort, some sort of delay, some sort of reverb, some sort of envelope filter, some sort of maybe overdrive or amp modeling pedal, some sort of preamp to get in and out of your pedal board, uh, sometimes some compression, a gate. A gate is a really, really important pedal, especially if you're gonna use a lot of overdrive in the things you do to help you control feedback. And then there's a number of other things, chorus, phasers, all this type of stuff. You could look at spending a minimum of probably $1,500, especially once you get all the other peripheral equipment. And you could easily spend $2,500 like that, um, building a good pedal board. And that's a big investment. I know for me, I've really got to think about how I spend my dollars on musical equipment because there's many things I need to purchase. Now, my rig, if you exclude my microphone and my tablet, um, which I kind of use for other things, I only spent about $400 on gear here. And that's things like getting my board, getting impedance changers, maybe getting some cables. So it's a much smaller investment and you can still get probably 75% as good of a sound. Now, yes, with individual stomp boxes, you're gonna get a little better sound um, in my experience. And that can be worth it in some cases. Definitely, if you're gonna be recording heavily um, with this setup or gigging heavily with this setup, it can be great. But um, for someone who uses this kind of as a, I don't know, a side part of the, most, the main playing that they do, it's just not worth the investment. Now, the other reason that I really love a multi effects pedal is it lets me set up individual patches. Um, so if I want a particularly uh, elaborate set of different effects for a particular tune, um, it's really easy to just program a particular like patch, almost like you would on a keyboard, and then um, switch to another one very easily without kind of resetting a bunch of pedals or without having to purchase any extra equipment. There are some other like pedal switching pedals that can control all of your um, equipment at once. But again, that's a bigger investment that um, for me just didn't make sense to spend that money. Let's check out kind of how this would play out. So we're gonna hear two different sounds. If I played these maybe on 
tunes that were back to back, um, there would have to be a little bit of fiddling that would happen in, in between the tunes. And this way I just have to click one button and I know those settings are right, right from the beginning. <laughs> Right, cool let's get into some actual sounds now the next most important or most common kind of effect sound that we hear horn players use is the so-called auto wah this is created by a category of filter called envelope filters you can do this with a uh, pedal a wah pedal um, there on the board i use there is a pedal i almost only use it as a volume pedal um, i find that the wah feature of it um, is not as helpful for me as a horn player in the type of lines that I play. Oftentimes when I'm using like the um, Ottawa filter, I'm playing relatively quick moving eighth note lines, more like bebop almost. Um, and sometimes that can be a little tricky to get all those sounds in with, with the wah pedal. So this is a great way to kind of get that sound um, a little easier. Let's check out an example of kind of my preferred setting with this Ottawa pedal, just to see what we're talking about. <laughs> Now, depending on what actual piece of hardware you use, you might have a number of different adjustments on there. Um, you're definitely probably going to have something called sensitivity, maybe a Q value, maybe something that says like wet, dry. There, there's a number of things depending on what actual pedal you get. The most important one that I find is the sensitivity knob. And you're going to want to turn that down relatively low. I like it to be somewhere between um, kind of the bottom third of the spectrum that you can turn. So, you know, zero to 30 percent, however you want to slice it. Um, what you're going to find is that the harder you're playing, the louder you're playing, the lower your sensitivity needs to be because that is how sensitive that pedal is um, before it kind of like engages. That's a simple way of thinking about it. We're not going to get into the actual kind of like technicalities of how this pedal works. And so when I have mine set kind of at a middle of that range, I have it about at like maybe 20% um, on this particular pedal. Everything is labeled as percents. Um, if I'm starting to play a little quieter or I'm at the beginning of a solo, I might actually manually on my board turn up that setting. So I'm just a little bit more sensitive for when I'm playing quiet, I can get some of the subtleties. Let's check out what that would sound like. Now, as I'm moving through my solo and I'm starting to get a little more aggressive, I might actually lean down and turn that sensitivity down a little bit. So that way, when I'm laying into the pedal, um, I'm not just forcing it to give me kind of like the um, open part of the envelope, you know, not the closed part of the envelope. And so that little bit of adjustment there can be really, really important when you're playing live and you're going to want to dial in where you find you like that sensitivity setting. So there is the envelope or auto wah pedal. The next thing we're going to talk about and the final kind of grouping of pedals we're going to think about today are reverbs and delays. Having some sort of reverb on your sound, especially when you're playing this more processed type of signal is incredibly important. 
Um, I think horn players a lot of times are a little bit wary of too much reverb because we don't want it to sound sort of like over the top um, and that we're in like a cavern, but a little bit of reverb is just going to help bring your sound to life, even on your clean sound. Um, if you don't have at least a little bit in there, it's gonna sound dull and not professional. And so you want just a little touch of reverb, something relatively subtle. Um, for me on this board, uh, it has a bunch of different reverb options. I like to use one of the spring reverbs. Um, that one tends to be nice and subtle. Um, and isn't too in your face. And I have the settings relatively well. Let's check out what that would sound like on uh, a clean sound. All right, now let's talk a little bit about delay. Um, we can somewhat think of delay as just a longer reverb, but what it's really doing is delaying your signal. And there are a lot of settings on these pedals and a lot of options. You'll have to work with them a little bit till you find out what works best for you um, again, mix is going to be really important. How much of your dry signal versus how much of your affected signal is going through. That's a really important one. Um, kind of the length of the feedback is really important. And then also many of them have what's called a tap tempo button, um, which is just like on your metronome. When you tap it, it picks up the tempo that you're going and you can set the parameters based on that. So there's a lot of experimentation you might need to do working with your delay pedal. Let's look at an example where I go pretty full out with a lot of reverb, a lot of delay. I actually have two different delays on this. Um, they are set at different um, tempos or different rhythms and that helps give a little bit more character to the type of sound and then I've also selected a relatively interesting um, reverb here. It, it has some harmonization built into it as well. So let's check out what this sounds like. <laughs> Okay, pretty heavy duty like effects there. You know, that's a very specific sound. I like to play that one on like a acapella intro to a tune. Um, it really, I think is attention grabbing for the audience. You know, it kind of fills up that space. Um, I would never use that probably in an ensemble. It would just be overwhelming and muddy. All right, cool. So those are some of the settings that I like and kind of my basic thought process about how we use these things. The final thing I'll leave you with today is if you want to get into this world, be prepared to do a little bit of learning. Um, I know when I started working on this stuff, whatever, half a dozen years ago, I did not have necessarily a huge knowledge about like audio production or any of that type of stuff. So even just some of the terms of like how I adjust these pedals, what does a threshold mean? All this type of stuff, I had to learn. There are lots of resources online that you can find, um, definitely for guitar, some for horn players. But what you're gonna to have to consider is you are not a guitar player and you are not a guitar. So some of the things and some of the settings you might find that work well for guitar players, you're gonna to have to take those um, with a grain of salt, or you're gonna to have to think about what's the concept they're really talking about here, and then how do I apply that to make it work with a trombone, running through a microphone, um, and then running out probably directly to a soundboard rather than to a, an amp. And so don't be afraid to kind of take some of those settings and tweak them. If you do go with a multi-effects pedal like I use, count on that none of the presets are gonna work very well on your trombone. They're probably just gonna create a bunch of feedback. Um, so you're gonna to need to go in and reprogram some of it based on the sounds you wanna get. If you're using a bunch of stomp boxes, um, there you have a lot of flexibility where you can just you know fiddle with it very easily in real time and you'll be able to dial in those settings that you like and figure out what really works for your instrument. Okay, cool. That's a pretty deep dive on both of these lessons into Sean's world of pedaling. Um, there's lots of great resources you can find online, so do check some of those out. And I hope you enjoy these lessons and have some happy practicing uh, turning yourself into a rock trombone player. <laughs>